Hey guys, today's topic is asynchronous FIFO. We have discussed about synchronous FIFO and its usage, but the usage is very limited in the real world. In real world, we use asynchronous FIFO. Asynchronous FIFO, I'm going to give you an example. So as you can see over here, Ethernet dumps the data which it gets from the network to the FIFO and where the data from the FIFO can be read at any time by PCIe and used by the system. Here we have Ethernet using a different clock and PCI using a different clock. So asynchronous FIFO is about doing the different operations on different clock. As we can see that we have we have two different clocks write clock and read clock. Write clock is used for only write operations and read clock is only used for read operations. So how are we gonna know about the full conditions or, or empty conditions? In synchronous FIFO there would be a no problem because we would compare the write pointer and the read pointer. But to here to compare the write pointer and read pointer we need to synchronize the data before comparing it. So how are we gonna synchronize it? We are gonna use two flop synchronizers. Please check the Two flop synchronizer video to understand clarity about two flop synchronizers but two flop synchronizers okay no problem but which code are we gonna use binary code if we use binary code what are the problems let us consider this so this is a binary code 101 which we are getting that means the pointer is at fifth position so now we need to increment it to sixth position so when we have incremented it to sixth position, as we can see, the two bits are changing: one to zero, zero to one. So after synchronization, after synchronization, we'll get one zero one zero one. See, one zero one will be passed through the synchronizer. We'll get one zero one. But when it's changing from one zero one to one one zero, we have a chance that we get one zero one or 110 or 100 or 111 we have different chances of getting the output as we can see we can get 5 or 5 6 7 4 out of this four options we can get any of the output that's the dangerous thing in the binary counter so as we can see binary counter is also leading into a full false full if we have a FIFO of depth 8 and we are getting eight. We are getting seventh location after shifting from five to six. Five to six. That's a huge deal. We should not get false full or false empty. So to avoid these conditions, we are going to use gray code. Why a gray code? Because uh, be because in the encoded values, but the successive change is only one bit. As you can see from 0 to 1 it's 1 bit, 1 to 2 it's 1 bit, 2 to 3 is 1 bit, 3 to 4 is 1 bit. So only one bit is changing and we can guess it's a previous value or the same value. As you can see over here when we convert it to a gray code it's 111, 101 and we pass it to the synchronizers over here. We pass it to the synchronizers over here like this. I can show you a better one. So 101, it's being converted to a gray and we are passing it to a synchronizers. We get 111 over here and we might get the outputs in two different forms. It will be a 5D or 6D. That's not a difference. You know, that's not a problem. We are getting the same value or the next value. Same value, that means we can change it later, but we are not getting false full condition. So the so so because to avoid this false full and false empty, we are gonna use binary to gray converters. So this is how a synchronous FIFO detail picture look. So we are gonna give write pointer, we're gonna pass through the binary to gray and two flop synchronizers then after grade to binary in the read clock then after we'll compare the conditions whether it's FIFO full or FIFO empty and similarly with the read pointer in the write clock domain 
we are going to do the same thing. So it's just a comparison after passing it through the right clock. But we have and one more problem over here. What's that problem is that when the right pointer and read pointer are equal, we have two conditions for it. When are the right pointer and read pointer are equal? Oh. So we have two conditions. As you can see, when right pointer and read pointer are pointing to zero, then it's an empty condition. As we write, the right pointer will increment and keep on incrementing. After the last location, it will wrap around to zero. And that time to right pointer and read pointer are equal. So how to know it's a full or empty? So to avoid this condition, we will use an extra bit in addresses. We'll use an extra bit in address. But the, the depth of the FIFO remains same. So now we make uh, right pointer and read pointer as 5 bits. The address is 5 bits right now instead of 4 bits for 16 deep FIFO. What happens see here? As we write, increment the write the pointer, the address will increment, keep on incrementing until 15. Then if comes back to 0, then we have an extra bit, it will be 16, not 0, 0, 0. So based on the extra bit, we can decide it's full or not. If the extra bit is not equal to the um, extra bit of 0, then it's a full condition. So full condition is looks like this. The extra bit is opposite of the read address. If both are equal, it's an empty condition. So a uh, brief overview. Uh, so as you can see that when a write enable is high and it's not a full condition, then we are going to write it into this memory using the write address and write data. So when using the write clock, we are going to read the data from the read address point. From which location? That's based upon the read address. So we are using a two flop synchronizers over here. A uh, right pointer is being sent to the two flop synchronizers, which is our, our, our clock over here. Our clock is converting the right pointer to our Q2 pointer, which will be then compared with our pointer so that we can check the it's empty or full. So if it's empty, we'll generate an uh, read empty. And if it's full over here, similarly, our pointer is sending through two flop synchronizers. We are getting the data of our pointer in RQ2, our pointer. And our pointer is compared over here and generated a full condition. So a full condition and empty conditions are generated using two flop synchronizers and binary to gray converter are being used. Before sending this read pointer, we are converting it into a, a gray code then after getting the read pointer over here we are converting back into a binary code i'll show an image so this is what exactly is happening we are sending the right pointer converting it to a gray and storing it sending it to the two flop synchronizers converting it back to binary and getting it in the read clock domain and comparing with the read pointer and just what we got then we'll get the FIFO empty or full conditions. Similarly, in the right condition, the right full condition, we are sending the read clock, the right read pointer in a read clock domain, converting it to binary to gray and storing in the flop and two flop synchronizers and back to gray to binary and comparing it into the read, read po right pointer and RQ2 pointer, read pointer, right clock. So if these conditions matches, the FIFO full and empty condition matches, what are the FIFO full? I showed this. If these conditions matches, then uh, we'll generate a FIFO full or FIFO empty. So this is the basic about asynchronous FIFO. Uh, I'm gonna make a design video about asynchronous FIFO. If you like this video, please thumbs up. Uh, it would be helpful for me to make more videos and please do subscribe. And thanks for watching.